I just got an email today. We are you know, being told, stop doing this. Stop reporting on this. You're depressing people. People won't come out to vote. Well, why would you bother to come out to vote if the electronic voting machine is going to flip your vote anyway? And we have been very successful, by the way. In 2004, nobody was talking about this. Bob Fetrakis and I at Columbus Free Press were virtually the only ones, uh, along with Howard and the black box voting. I mean, the, the people doing this, uh, were, you could count on the fingers of one hand. And we were dismissed as conspiracy theorists, and we were attacked most rabidly, most rabidly by the Democratic Party. And, uh, and you know, as I say, um, Al Gore conceded an election that he won in Florida with no follow-up whatsoever on the realities of election theft in Florida 2000. John Kerry conceded in Ohio less than 24 hours after the polls closed with 250,000 votes uncounted in an election that was ultimately decided where the official vote uh, uh, margin was 118,000. Um, and they had $7 million in the, in the bank to uh, recount and to, for, to force legal action to require that there be a follow-up on the election of 2004, and he refused to do it. And what he did do, John Kerry, was take some of that money and hire a lawyer from the Republican law firm, the Taft law firm in Cincinnati, the biggest Republican law firm in the state, to attack us for pointing out that the election had been stolen. So you ask why the Democrats haven't done anything. Um, we don't know precisely. We, there is one broader theory, which I think does hold historical weight, although it's a bit abstract, which, uh, which is that the Republicans and the Democrats are both corporate parties. So they're both dominated by big money. The Republicans are very upfront about it. They're the party of big business. The Democrats are allegedly the party of the people, but they take the big corporate money, too, as we've seen in four years of Barack Obama. And so the two of them, the two corporate parties, have a vested interest in the ability to steal elections. Because if, God willing, uh, we finally get another third or fourth party movement sufficiently powerful to challenge the power of the Democrats and the Republicans and the 0.1 of the 0.1% that own and operate this country, uh, they want the ability to put them down at the polls. And I'll tell you the classic instance. Um, at the turn of the last century, you had two major third party movements, the populist movie, movement from the farming community and then the socialist movement from the working and union communities. The populist movement uh, uh, attempted in 1896 to elect William Jennings Bryan as president of the United States. I believe he actually won the election, but the, the Republicans were able to suppress the vote and to steal the ballots. Of, this is before electronic voting machines, so paper not ballots have to be all and end all, and to put William McKinley in the White House. And then after that, the, the Socialist Party uh, arose. Socialist Party was very, very powerful, and its leader, Eugene V. Debs, was the most popular public figure in the United States for 20 years. He ran for president for five times and never officially got more than a million votes. I don't think that's even vaguely credible. And the classic instance came in 1916. Eugene V. Debs, who was born and raised in Terre Haute, Indiana, was beloved by everybody who knew him, ran for Congress. <laughs> And he and his wife and his brother and all his friends obviously voted in Terre Haute in 1916. And yet Eugene V. Debs' vote count for Congress in Terre Haute in 1916 was zero. <laughs> Nobody allegedly voted for Eugene V. Debs for Congress in 1916 in Terre Haute, Indiana. And this is the kind of power that the Democrats and the Republicans want to retain. Now, is there, are the Democrats saying, well, we know that the Republicans are going to steal it and it's more important to us to retain this power? You know, I, I don't go that far. But the reality is that these are corporate parties with an interest in the so-called stability of the system. And we have seen from Al Gore and John Kerry that they are unwilling to challenge the reality of a stolen election. And I will tell you flat that if this election is stolen uh, by the Republicans from the Democrats, Barack Obama will say nothing. He will not challenge it because his personal stake is in maintaining his credibility and he knows that the whole right wing and all the Fox News, they will scream and yell as they did it at, at the brief challenge by Al Gore in, 19, in 2000 that uh, this is conspiracy theory and it's threatening the system and blah, blah, blah. And none of the Democrats have the courage <clears throat> or the conviction of the belief in grassroots democracy, I believe, 
to make this happen. Dennis Kucinich would challenge it. Bernie Sanders would challenge it. The left of the Democratic Party might do it. John Conyers, the congressman from Detroit, did an excellent report on what happened in 2000. But he's been dismissed by the mainstream of the Democratic Party. The mainstream of the Democratic Party is very, very corporate dominated. And this is a corporate issue. So the Republicans and the Democrats will continue to steal elections from each other, uh, uh, but they will not challenge each other in public because it requires too much, uh, it, it involves too great a threat to the stability of the, the monopoly or the duopoly that they have over our political process. I'll point out another thing, if you may recall, Ralph Nader had the temerity, to, can you imagine, he had the, 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 the gall to run for President of the United States in 2000. And when Al Gore was defeated, was, when the election was stolen from Al Gore in Florida, the Democrats spent four years screaming at Ralph Nader for daring to run for president. When the election was stolen right out from under their eyes uh, and had nothing to do with Ralph Nader. And so after screaming at the Ralph Nader for four years, what happens in 2004? The Republicans steal it again, this time in Ohio. Uh, so this system needs to be changed, and I'll tell you exactly what we want to do. We want, Bob Fetrakis and I writing at freepress.org and uh, election uh, reform people, people have pretty much the same ideas. Number one, hand count of paper ballots. All ballots in the United States should be paper ballots, hand counted. You know, we do get Scantron paper ballots, very easily manipulated. And, uh, it, it's, not, it's not really a paper ballot, a Scantron ballot. I mean, it's, it's preferable to touchscreen voting, but it's not foolproof. We want hand-counted paper ballots, no machine counting. This is done in Germany, Switzerland, Canada, Japan. They all managed to count the ballots. Ireland had electronic voting machines and just threw them out and reverted to hand-counted paper ballots. That's what we need to do nationwide. Secondly, or really first, we need to have universal voter registration. Every citizen who turns 18 in this country should be automatically registered to vote. All you need to do is get a form, sign it, mail it in or take it into your election board and then show up at the polls, sign in again and vote. Everyone who turns 18 who is a citizen in this country should be automatically registered to vote. There is no excuse for this massive voter registration stuff. You're an American citizen, you're, vote, you're registered to vote, that's it, period. Third, we should have a four-day national holiday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, where uh, the polls are open and people come vote. And the kids, the students, the college students, the high school students should get off on Monday and Tuesday to run the polls and then count the ballots. And uh, very, very simple. Finally, we have to get money out of politics. The Citizens United decision allowing corporate money to pour into our political system, it's ridiculous. It means, of course, that the corporations will run the show. We don't want that. We want, you know, one dollar, one vote is not a good way to, to have a government. So these four basics are what we're looking for. And uh, the Democratic Party seems every bit as threatened by this as the Republican Party. Uh, I am, by the way, not advocating Barack, for Barack Obama or the Democratic Party. I will be supporting my buddy Bob Fetrakis, who's running for Congress as a Green from this uh, district. And supporting and have been supporting Jill Stein for Green Party president uh, of the United States. So this is about preserving our democracy. As Jesse Jackson put it, we can afford to lose an election, but we can't afford to lose our democracy.